Sage Canada of VO2 Max Productions here with another training talk video. Today we're going to talk about 3K to 10K training. Yes, that's right. You spoke and I listened. And I also want to mention I'm in beautiful Golden, Colorado here. You kind of see the background. It hill repeats up this epic hill. It was really steep and hard. It's like 15% grade. But uh, yeah, so thanks for the comment. Uh, I saw another comment that got about equal votes, but I'm going to go with this shorter distance training here. Um, and for my ultra running friends, you could uh, learn about some more speed work and terms and things that I think would, would help ultra running as well. And for other people, uh, maybe you're in high school, maybe you're in college, maybe you're interested in racing a two mile or a 5k, uh, this information hopefully will be useful for you. So to start off, I'll say I'd get the book Daniel's Distance Running Formula. That is the most influential training book that I've ever read. And I read it in seventh grade, I got the first edition, it was back in 1998 totally blew my mind. I think they're on the second or third edition now. Um, but it's a really, really great book. It breaks down periodization, how to break your training into different phases so you peak at the right time, and it breaks down all these training terms um, with speed work, VO2 max training, interval training, lactate threshold, tempo runs, long runs, easy pace, and gives you paces to run at each intensity based on current race performances, which was pretty revolutionary. Jack Daniels is an exercise physiologist, not the the whiskey guy but um, it's a great book so check that out and what I'd say with 3k to 10k training and I'm not going below 3k because I, I really suck at, at the 800 meter that's more of a anaerobic event but 3k to 10k training the most important determinant of your success is vo2 max and it's not just vo2 max but velocity at vo2 max and how do you develop that well it's through classic interval training um, mainly by doing longer repeats, anywhere from three to five minutes, at a pretty high intensity. 95% uh, maximum heart rate uh, usually is, is a good rule of thumb. And you take an equal, a shorter than rest uh, between each interval. So if you're doing 1,000 meter repeats, which I highly recommend, uh, do at least five. And maybe if you're a high, higher mileage person, you could do up to eight. Um, and you take maybe a two minute rest or a three minute rest between each rep. Uh, and that's if you're running maybe between three or four minutes on each thousand. Um, but before you start doing interval training, uh, you want to build some aerobic base. And how do you do that? Well, in before college cross country, 8K to 10K racing, or before my high school cross country season, 5K racing, we'd always build our base up over the summer with a lot of easy runs, building our mileage up with really easy pace running and mixing in some long runs. Then after a couple weeks or three or four weeks of doing that, you want to mix in some tempo runs first. 85% maximum intensity, 20 minutes, 20 minute tempo runs. Uh, you can check out my tempo run, like the threshold video. I'll click the link up there. So you do that first before you start interval training because otherwise you're going to get in shape too fast, you're going to flood your system with lactic acid probably, and you're going to burn out. And you can't catch out, you can't burn out until you catch fire. And if you do interval training too hard too soon, you're eventually going to burn out. And you might get in shape really fast, you might have some good races, really short-lived, but eventually that's not going to be a sustainable thing. So do the tempo run training first, get in some long runs, build up your easy mileage. And you could also be doing some speed work, uh, some shorter distance, more rep work is what uh, Jack Daniels would call it. But it's speed work faster than your goal race pace. So this could start off during base phase as strides, just doing 100 meters at 90% maximum speed with good form, good efficiency, and a full recovery, maybe four by 100. And then you build up to maybe doing reps. And Daniels defines these as like 200 to 400 meter repeats usually. And they're not anaerobic by nature initially. You wanna keep the recovery time full and to make sure you have good form. And you might be breathing hard the last 10 seconds of each rep, but they're not really anaerobic until the very end of the season. So if you're doing these faster, shorter rep workouts, it could be short hill repeats, could be a fartlek workout, and then you're mixing in tempo runs. And, and then right before you want to peak, maybe you're four weeks out from your goal race or six weeks out, you start doing the VO2 max work. And maybe you're only doing this once a week, maybe you're doing it on a nine or 10 day cycle. I think that's more of an ideal training cycle. But you're always changing up these variables and you're always progressing with the intensity of your workouts and slowly lowering your VO2 max velocity pace 
your lactate threshold tempo run pace. And so these short intervals are very important to do. I do maybe two to three of these types of workouts a week, uh, no more than three, or you're probably for sure gonna overtrain. And then keep your easy days really easy in between each in hard workout. Uh, in between speed work, you could be running a lot slower on your easy days. It should be no more than 70% of your maximum heart rate. And then you should be doing some element of a long run also uh, during this time to kind of sustain that aerobic base and to not do it too hard. Uh, and then as you're getting into the peak phase of the season, you could induce some lactic acid into the system. You could race yourself a little bit into shape, especially if you're doing the shorter events, maybe do a, a mile or 1500 if you're getting ready for a 3K, maybe do a 5K if you're getting ready for a 10K. And that's gonna help you kind of zero in and race yourself into shape, because that's really the most specific workout you could do before one of these races. And uh, you could start doing 400 meter repeats, maybe with a shorter rest, doing them a little bit faster than race pace, and that will induce lactic acid and give you some buffering power so that you don't tie up as much. Uh, but the real key elements are to stay fit aerobically and to develop the system slowly and progress over time. And that aerobic base first is really important and building your mileage up with easy, easy runs and some long runs and lactic threshold work because that will give you the most improvement over the long term. And it may take a while to kick in. For me, it took several months to several years uh, in high school when I first bumped up my mileage. And you can't get injured, you can't get sick, you can't overtrain. And it's a, it's a double-edged sword because you're always pushing your body, but at the same time you have to recover and super compensate or get that next bump up in fitness. And that's really the name of the game. Um, and so uh, this is kind of long-winded, so I'm going to stop here. But thanks again for all the support and all the views. Um, feel free to comment below with any questions you have. I'll try to get back to some of them. I won't be able to get back to all of them for sure. But uh, keep them coming and keep suggesting new topics for a training talk topic. Really appreciate all the views and all the support. And stay tuned for more Via2Max Productions.